hello lovelies welcome back to my channel this week is probably the most requested video I've ever ever had <laughs> from way back when I originally did the paper bee tutorial if you haven't seen it it's like a compilation of a whole load of tutorials on how to make different paper beads peekaboo <laughs> And at the end of that video, I showed a whole bunch of ways that I personally like to decorate my paper beads. And one of them was uh, the foils. And although I did kind of explain it, I didn't show it step by step. So I do get asked like every day <laughs> how I foil paper beads. And I also get asked about where to get supplies. So I'm not giving you supplies, guys. I know like it's normal when you, you do this to give affiliate links and all of that. But um, I personally think just go on Amazon and just type in like foil sheets or you know foil glue and find the ones you want because every country is different like the foil glue I have is from a British company and I don't have a particularly favorite set of foils because the foils I use are still the ones that I had 20 plus about 25 years ago for nail art because that's the industry that these foils originally came from but now you know you can get them from pretty much definitely off of Amazon, off of eBay and all of these kind of places. Just use the search bar to find what you want. Although you may want to wait until after you've seen this video to go and purchase just so you get the ones that give you the right foil look that you want for your paper beads. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Okay, my love, I should say that this is not the only way to foil paper beads. However, this is the way that I think really makes the foil pop, really makes the paper beads stand out and is the way that I've got asked how I foil paper beads for years. So the ones I'm zooming in on, these ones, these ones, these ones and these ones, these are the foil bead ones and these are the ones I'm going to show you how to make with my tips and tricks. I think they are pretty exquisite. So. If you follow these steps, you will get some pretty fabulous looking beads. Number one is to use a black paper for your beads. Now, I'm not going to share with you how to make the beads. I've already done that. You can check out my massive paper bead tutorial teaching you all the ways where I get comments every day saying this is the best paper bead tutorial I've ever seen. So I'm not going to top it and I'm not going to cover it here and make this video super long. Choose whichever paper beads you want to make and use black paper. Now, if you don't have black paper, you can paint the paper beads that you've made with black but personally I find that the foils don't adhere as well or the foil glue I should say doesn't adhere as well to a painted bead as it does a raw paper bead that is not yet varnished or covered with anything and I think that might be because it's more porous so obviously the glue can adhere more easily but of course if you don't have any black paper you can of course paint them and what I think may be better to use rather than acrylic paint because it all has the polymers and it's thicker is maybe acrylic ink if you have it I haven't tried it but I think it may work better than the paint then the second tip is to use metallic foils so you can get metallic foils, you can get patterned foils, and to be fair, they all look beautiful, especially on the black background. Something like this, that is a lace. You can see how pretty that looks. But you know, it goes by foils, because this one's a darker foil. It might look better on a lighter background. But generally, I would say overall, the way to make your foils, get the most out of your foils, is to use a darker background and a plainer background. So those are the tips to choosing what materials you want to use to foil your paper beads with. Now onto the actual foiling. My glue is in a pen type thing, so what I do is... I cut it open. I do still use the foil like this because you, you can get it more precise, such as you can make dots. With it. But because these beads have this, you know, very steppy texture especially if you use a thick paper 
that I use for these beads. If you use a thinner paper and make th it makes thinner beads, the steps aren't so prominent, but these ones are very, you can hear <laughs> as I scrape my nail across it, they're, they're very steppy. So it makes them difficult to get a perfectly precise foil, but let's try it. So I like to, this is like from 20, 25 years ago, <laughs> my original little nail polish glue that I just top up with these newer foil pens that I buy and I'm going to cover the whole thing to show you what foiling um, in totality looks like and a tip for foiling is to not slather this on thickly make it thin thinner the better really you know you can go over and wipe it as you wipe it on you can also kind of wipe some off as well and then another way is another tip is to also flip it around so you're working in this side so it's some something that just is a little bit easier for me anyway to do but then let it dry totally which means that this needs to look the same as these ones this glue will go totally clear it will still look shiny but it will go totally clear and another mistake that people make a lot of is to try and foil it before all of the glue has gone completely clear okay so those two things are really important for foiling. Number one, to make it as thin a layer of glue as possible. And two, wait for it to dry. Don't be impatient. I think this one might be done with the dots. So let's, let's just have a go. Let's see. Ooh, pretty. Oh, that's very pretty. Okay, I'm going to go and do more dots on the rest of it because that's really pretty. The dots are not very easy to do on this because of all of the, the layers. So they don't really look like dots. They can <laughs> very easily look like misshapen oblongs or something. But I'm not, as long as you aren't too bothered about perfection with these beads and the foil, they can look really, really beautiful. But if you try and get them so perfect, the foil and the texture on the paper beads, it, it just won't work very well for you. You've got to allow it to kind of um, try it however you want to and then allow it to come out how it wants to come out rather than trying to get perfect lines or perfect dots or perfect whatever on your beads okay so I think we might be there with the glue if it isn't you'll soon see what it looks like <laughs> when it doesn't work or when you haven't waited long enough okay so I'm gonna go for this foil because I think you'll be able to see quite clearly against the black on this one if any areas don't take etc and then what you want to do is rub 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 quite vigorously across the whole thing and several times another thing that people do is they try and rip this away before it's ready to um, come off so you can give it a tug and if it's still sticky and it doesn't want to release then you haven't rubbed it enough or you put too much glue on so that's you know, if you haven't done the tips, I've already said that's <laughs> what happens. If that's the case and you think you put too much glue on, you just have to rip it and see whatever you've got. But if it's because you haven't rubbed it enough, then keep going. Okay. I think I've done as good a job as I can and you can see as I pull it away you can see I covered this top to toe in glue and quite clearly 
on the foil you can see the texture of the bead left so that is what the bead looks like I think it's beautiful I don't think you have to cover every single little piece of this bead with the foil if I show you my others these ones are actually made out of all of the waste pieces of the metallic foil here look I save all the scraps and then I get these multicolor beauties coming out of it but I don't try and cover every single little piece of the bead in fact you can see here I've left the ends because I like seeing the texture I think it adds to it especially if you use black or if you've got navy blue or dark purple or, or darker colors I think it really makes the foils just pop so personally I think this looks better than just trying to cover the whole thing I think it looks more arty more edgy uh, let's try this one and see this looks like it's pretty much yep no more color I can't see on here so Ooh, ooh, ooh. pretty 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 but not perfect not exactly equal a lot of these shapes aren't even dots but still very pretty so how I personally like to do it is to not be so accurate with the glue I just kind of slosh it on again as long as it's thin I'm actually not trying to just do it like this see <laughs> As long as I've covered the majority. I'm happy. And I'll do these other beads with different foils just to show you the effects. I may show you the lacy type ones as well because it will show you again how not to be a perfectionist when it comes to using foils on beads because the texture that did this on the bead will do the same on that bead so you're not going to get a perfectly um, printed lace that you have here should you use it on a flatter surface okay I think we're done it's like waiting for a treat <laughs> to come out of the oven waiting for these to to dry enough okay so this metallic one has a lovely little pattern holographic pattern I might add that again you will completely lose on a paper bead and I've actually got an opaque um, pattern so I'll use that one for the next bead so you can see it <laughs> yeah that took next to nothing of it you can see that it has it's still got the same pattern as that going off okay let me now show you how to refoil because you can't refoil on the same beads but they will get tacky and they will not even pull up as much as the other ones but that is how I make these ones if one will come up that are using all of the little bits and bobs when you use the little bits and bobs because they have you'll put it onto it and it will have areas where there's no foil anyway you then need to reapply and the job does get quite tacky and there will be areas that stay bold and just stay gluey but then what fixes that is either more foil more foil and it will get tackier and tackier or glaze which I will go on to later on in the video Incidentally, I did put some glue on a little saucer bead, some of these beads, and let's see how that works out. Uh, let's 
go orange. And I've gone onto the flat side, which again has all of the texture to it. So I may go along the edge and I may get a more, more of a purchase of the foil. But for starters, I wanted to do the sides. Again, I show you how to make these beads in that tutorial if you're wondering. Okay, pull that up too quick. Keep going, keep going. lovely that looks actually I may cut that one and save it to put on an art journal background so I'll put some glue down on an art journal page and then add that because it's just gorgeous to add a layer of detail but again you can see it hasn't taken <laughs> over the whole thing because it's difficult foiling even a flat surface sometimes it can not take totally so this is why I'm saying the best way to foil a paper bead is to leave the perfections at the door and just be happy with the ooze and the ah oh <laughs> that you get when you make a bead and you're just like oh that's come out so pretty and it's not what I intended it to be at all okay let's go on to the uh, the lace one same as the other non foil um non metallic one so i'm going to refoil this one as well has picked up a lot more than the other one I have to say you can see there are areas where you can even see that it is a lacy pattern but for me you know I want it to look pretty awesome I want it to have an impact so I'm going to refoil it while I'm waiting for those ones to dry I'm also these are just clay by the way that just help um, if you want to make paper beads, you can use polystyrene, foam, you know, figure out what you've got. I just made these out of clay years ago because I wanted something that was, wasn't was going to take up too much room, but was weighty enough to hold a lot of paper beads. So I made these a long time ago now, just via poking holes <laughs> in a piece of air dry clay. What I'm going to do is add some foil onto already made beads. So for instance, these ones are also foiled, but just in the middle. So I may do that with some of these ones as well, just to zhuzh them up, show you how it just elevates an already made bead. I was just about to, just about to paint. cocktail stick without a bead on it yep that's my day I'm going to try these fat ones that are already glazed as well okay and the first one that didn't take I'm going to use pink I think and then what I will do is I will re glue it again and then I might go across with this iridescent foil so it's not a metallic but it still has a metallic key effect okay so this is where there was a bit too much glue build up and so it didn't stick so I'm going to try re-glue that bit Okay, I'm going to try the one that we did the lace one on. I'm hoping it's dry. Okay, 
Oh, you are beautiful. I've got to say, the oil on water one is probably my favourite foil. It's the first foil I ever had, this oil on water. It's the first foil I ever had from a craft store as well, when they used to come in big sheets, and they used to be very expensive when they first came out. It was the only one, actually, I bought from a craft shop, because I just love that multicolour oil on water effect. So that same foil I used on the dotty one and you can see the difference between giving it a full on effect or a, a little touch. Okay, let's hope and pray that these ones are, are dry enough. I really cannot tell. Another bonus to using a plain bead for your foils is you can see the glue better when it dries. Mm, it's a bit tacky. Oops, it is. But you can say, okay, it's a good um, learning. If you do not wait for it to dry properly, look what happens. It sticks, it's tacky, it's like mozzarella cheese on pizza, which I don't eat because I'm vegan, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> but even so, you glaze this and that tackiness will disappear. And it still adds a hint, even though it's not perfect, there's no consistent line of foil going on the middle as there were the other ones that I showed you. It still elevates the beads, so I'd still call that a win. Let's try the glazed ones. I'll go with this one, I think. Oh, yes, yes, yes. See, it just, mm, 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 just makes it yummier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's give this one another go that's very tacky now. And I was going to do the iridescent, wasn't I? On this one that's got a few layers to it. And you can see this one is not opaque. It's totally see-through. You can see the bead perfectly through it. It's still tacky, but in certain areas, ooh, just giving it a lovely pearlescence. No longer just straight up. Where's the pink? Where's the pink? No longer just straight up. Pink has greens in it, some blues. Yeah, I like it. You could keep going, you could keep adding should you wish to. It will get tackier the more you go so then you have to glaze so let's get on to glazing so do you need any particular thing to glaze with no um, in the original video I shared this particular brand diamond glaze I quite like um, some people do use nail varnish uh, some people find that nail varnish yellows some people like the polyurethane type varnish it's up to you what you do but even if all you have is embossing powder or matte gels or glues such as Mod Podge they do work you know and I think it's better to do it to protect your bead rather than not I'm just going to use this pot or the base of the pot to put my varnish on you can see that this varnish is very very thin runny I prefer that with um, with paper beads to a, a, you know a thick uh, glaze but that is a personal preference and again leaving them on the cocktail stick to do this helps I do think that adding a glaze kind of dulls the the foils a tad but I think the payoff to making sure that they don't come off it can it can kind of uh, crack the foils when you do it you may understand what I mean by that kind of they kind of like shrivel up a little bit and that dullifies them dullifies <laughs> my very um, technical term but again it's it's worth it to make sure that they last and my tip for this is to do again a thin layer 
thin 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 don't whack on thick layers thinking that that is going to protect them that will dull the bead a lot quicker so you see I've dipped my brush but it, I'm not laden in it you know there's if I was put it on my skin it's just like a little bit of water it's not it's not dripping or anything just do a thin layer first then go in with a second layer so that first layer is just kind of sealing the foil then the second layer protects the bead um, that kind of shriveling up you, I, don't, I don't think the camera will pick it up but it's kind of happening with this bigger one I'll tell you what I'll do to emphasize my point I will do it on a piece of paper so I'll wait for those to dry I'll foil them and then I will glaze one and not the other and then you might be able to get an idea of this <laughs> shriveling up effect. I do get asked do you have to glaze paper beads? No you don't have to, I haven't glazed every paper bead I've ever made but you want it to um, just be more durable especially if it's going on something that you're giving away as a gift personally then I would make sure I'd always glaze it make sure you get the edges that's a tough spot and just again if you're foiling you want to make sure that nothing is tacky remaining from the glue that the places where the foil is is thoroughly protected or it will scratch off flake off get knocked off rubbed off you know I think glazing also makes them more kind of one unit rather than a piece of rolled paper that can essentially if you pull away where the glue is keeping it together can be unrolled it fuses the bead to kind of be in one thing pour water on it once it's glazed it's not gonna swell up take on all the water etc it's got a coating there that makes it a little bit water resistant I wouldn't call it waterproof but water resistant and of course makes it shiny if you want a shiny bead rather than a dull bead if you just use regular paper so these look kind of ready let's see okay pretty what okay so let's put some glaze on this one then I was going to say, well, maybe I'll try the Mod Podge to test it, but I realised it's matte, the Mod Podge I've got. So I wouldn't use that anyway, because that will dull, dull it. So if you was taking the examples I was giving, ignore the Mod Podge variety I chose. I'm grabbing my others, and they're all satin or matte, or I've got another varnish that's matte. So I wouldn't actually use any of those. Let's just try the old diamond glaze. Yeah, there's definitely, the more I add, it, the more it dulls. Yeah. Maybe see that it has done a little bit. Not as shiny, super beautiful as this one. And yeah, smooth looking. But for what it does, it's worth glazing your beads. Hmm. So all of my tips are number one, to use black paper slash darker colour paper if you can, if you don't have it to paint your paper beads a darker colour. Number two, to use metallic foils. Number three, to use a very thin layer of glue. Don't over glue it. Number four, to make sure the glue dries thoroughly. Don't go in too early. Got what number we're on, but the next tip is to put the foil on and to not pull it away if it is resisting, if you're having to tug it away, keep rubbing um, to make sure that it comes away loosely. If, however, it comes away and it hasn't got the glue on it, it's got glue still adhering or, or tackiness, then add more layers. Allow it to come out in a lovely jumble of colour rather than, this is my next tip, being a perfectionist with how it comes out. Finally, to glaze it with two thin layers of glaze rather than one fat layer. Those are all my tips for making beautifully 
foil paper beads and I really hope to see you guys what you create if you want you can join in with our paper bead art swap on my art community this month we are swapping paper beads that is open for a few more days for you to join before we assign partners and those are decorated paper beads that we are swapping not just regular paper beads but having some decoration on them something something fancy to swap trade with and foils are a perfect one to use for that but any kind of decoration is allowed in the paper bead swap that is one of the free activities I have on my art community should you wish to go over and join we are also having a free event next month called the super studio spruce up if you need to get your studio back into the inspiring space you want it to be, you deserve this lovely space to create in. So that's happening in a couple of weeks, so go join up now, ready. And I'll see you all soon. Much love, everybody. Bye.